Hey there, thanks for stopping by. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Robbie Greer from Rusticated Art, and this is Fun Times Family Art, where you get to draw along with me in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> really appreciate it if you watch for at least four minutes that way the YouTube algorithm will recognize your visit now if you're a homeschooler and you feel that my fun times family art playlist could be of some help to you by all means use it the only thing I ask is that you subscribe to my channel and you share it with your friends <laughs> now this week's video is a continuation of last week where we we're drawing the crease and be sure to watch through to the end because not only will I be giving you plenty of helpful hints and tips and the techniques that I use along the way but I'll also be giving a shout out to another very special channel and who knows that channel could be yours <laughs> well I think that's enough chat so what do you reckon are you ready to get started well come on then okay now we've virtually got all the underdrawing done in fact we have got it all done and now it's just a matter of going back in and just putting in the shade for the creases. I'm just going to use my 2H pencil here because I want to go around and just, just see where the darks are going to go and the, and the, the lights in the mirror. Because we've got three different tones. And those tones we're using are light, mid-tones and of course our darks. Just a little bit of a squiggly bit going on there. Now I don't know if you can hear the wind, the wind has come up, man it's blowing a gale outside, really like gale force winds going on out there. So now I'm only using the light pencil because I think it's probably better. Now I'm just going to bring this in a little bit, make sure we can see that all right there. It's probably going to be better to just do it very very lightly to start with and just work our way in. And I want to start, I'm going to start on a square here in this grid. And we're just slowly just changing the tone in there. And we're doing this by going over it several times. Now I could go in here with a darker pencil with an HB or a 2B, but I don't really want to do that at this stage. I want to just create those tonal differences, those tonal values. And then just see what we've got. And then I can come back and look at doing that. And it's the same old story. We're going to be putting down graphite. We're going to be taking some out. I'm going to use my... My Kohinoor pencil eraser, just to create a little line there. I'm going to come back in with this and just very lightly. I don't want to come right up to that line. So there's a, there's a sort of like a little gap there. I might just go with the Tombow, I think. It's a bit finer. All right, now, now I get my blending brush, a little bit of crumb there, and just, just go with that. Just gently, look, see? All we're trying to do is create just a little difference in the tone. Now, I'm going to go with my HB here, and we're going to come up here. Now this tucks in behind there. So it's one of those little creases. It's quite dark there and then quite light there. Now, for some reason I've made that. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm just going to Make that a little bit smaller. It's just a little bit darker on the inside of that crease there. Now just take your time on this. I know I keep saying it, but I mean it. Just take your time. Right now, I'm going to get my grid, my grid tool. Now, we're going to go into the square here, which is 2, 5. And let's just focus on what we can, we can do here. Now, the outside this out here is virtually the same tone and I say virtually because there are some little real subtle differences in here and I'll show you how we do that but first of all I just want to get this area shaded in now I'm not going well I am sort of going backwards and forwards but I'm trying to make little circular motions at the same time as we go up and down and of course that's the texture of the paper is making it we, we can see little sort of strokes and lines in there, but that'd be right. We're going to blend all that just very lightly. I'm just using the, there's hardly no weight going on the pencil. A little bit darker there, so we'll come right out to that bit there. It's not a crease, well it's, it's sort of been pushed in a bit, so yeah, I'm not entirely happy with this piece here. It 
tucks in behind there like that. Now here, it comes down to the line. So I'm going to bring that down a little wee bit because I want to include the, it's, so, it's right on the edge of the line, which is, the line is here. I'll make a little dot there so I know. And this part here, Sort of comes, it, fold, it sort of folds around and in, well inside of itself, but at the same time, it's a different. It's, well, it's like a little soft crease, little. So I'm just trying to create that. So it's darker in the bottom of the crease. That's where the cutout tool comes in handy, really does. So then we've got coming down here. It's a bit darker there too. There's a lot of blending to do in this. And the thing is, you just keep just keep going. You know, you're, you're heading in the right direction. It, sometimes it doesn't make sense, you just can't work it out, but you just got to keep going. Follow the, what's inside that little cutout. Now I've just taken the grid away at the moment because it, it's sort of right on the cusp of everything. Right this part here, see where the line comes through here? So I want to be able to see it, so I'm just looking at what we've got on, on my monitor in front of me. I'm trying to just stay focused on the one area. That's why I like to use the cutout. It just helps me to stay focused on there. Now, I'm going to get my blending stump here. Just soften that up a bit. It's a little bit lighter, but hardly noticeable in this area here. Now, down here, it comes down, and in there, it's a little bit darker. Just in there. And then it just sort of comes around. So we just create that motion as well. We're coming around. And it's like a ridge going up here. Now I'm going to use a little bit of blue tack. Actually, this is a kneadable eraser. Now I get my kneadable eraser, and we're just going to take it a little off there. See, just along that ridge there, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. Now I think we might, what we might do now is I'm going to go down to the next grid, the next square, and we'll just go into that one to, and try and get them to all merge. And that there is right on that line, so that's sort of. So just come around using not circular motions, but I'm not going straight up and down. I'm sort of bringing it around a bit because when you look at the a close up of the actual cloth, it's got these cross sections like how it's been weaved together, I guess. And then that piece there, down there like that, it's got to be a bit lighter in there. So I'll just take that out now. So we can see that that crease is there, and this on this ridge there, there's just a little bit, a little bit lighter. It's sort of shiny, you know, the way the cloth gets shiny. It goes up to there, blend it. This is where the blending stump come in really good, really handy here. You just go a bit darker and a bit lighter, and then this comes down. Come back to the grid, we cut out now. There we go, right there. So in here it's a bit darker. So what we're looking at is halfway there. See, with this new cutout that I've, I've made up, it's like a little jig I guess, and I've got, we can actually see where we can come across diagonally, we can go up and down, we can go across. That's going to be darker in here. This is really subtle, you like, it's only because I've got it zoomed in on my screen that I can see a lot more than I can see just by looking at the reference photo. And you got to squint your eyes, and you, you know, that's how you just sort of pick it all up. Just brush away that crumb. All right, now next one. All right, so we're just moving across as we go. Down about there, a bit darker there. And it comes down into there. Yeah, there's little subtle differences, but that's how the creases are. I think we might just put in, might just do the zigzags, I think. The zigzag starts here. I don't want them too uniform because they're not, they're sort of, well they've been cut with a machine obviously, but they haven't landed flat perfect, you know what I mean? They're not quite spaced evenly, so we don't have to put too much effort into trying to make them look perfect. And then that sort of just see like that. But then we've got the crease sort of comes over like that, then it's folding under. And then it sort of goes up just above the grid line. And that sort of just goes in there like that. 
and in here it's a bit darker and then underneath that's a bit darker but in here it's a little bit lighter so I'm gonna just go in here like this and I'll use my blending stump just to darken that up a little bit and down here we've got so it's best to get this in now since if we're gonna put it in we'll put it in now and that way it actually goes through that line but I'll just do it like that and then we'll go up here and over here so a bit of a different angle here this is all pretty sort of flat in here the crease is mainly up here the top half well now it's just a matter of just putting a little bit more shadow a bit more shade I'm using my 4B here because it's time to just darken it up where it needs to be darkened Come down here, but what happened there? It looks like a little bit of a, a little bit off course there. Never mind. Just a little crease in there. It goes up there like that, and then there. I'm just I'm just putting down a little bit of graphite. And then I'm going to go with the blender, my blending stump, and just tidy it all up. Down here, it's quite dark in here. And it's not exactly the same. But, uh, looks like a pretty good looking crease to me. It's like anything, you know, we could we could spend a lot more time on it. And yours is not going to be the same as mine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. The exercise is all about just how you go about putting in creases, that's all. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look like, like, like mine. The whole point of the exercise is that now you know how to go about the increases, simple as that. And it's just a matter of putting down graphite, taking some out. It's really all it's about. Go over this now, where I've gone over with that 4B pencil, just to soften it up, spread it around a bit. Gotta put a few little highlights in, but we'll just get the graphite moved around where we want it. Not difficult at all. Well, I think that's just about enough. I'm just gonna put a few little highlights in here just where the, where the cloth is, is folded over. Do you know how they get the shiny bits? Well, that's what I'm just doing there, where the fold is. And then I'm going to get my little blending brush. Well, I don't really want to do too much more. Just squinting my eyes to see if I can see any more, anything else that I could put in. But I don't think we need to do any more. I think you get the idea of it. I might just, just go around the edge like that just to give a bit of a Take away a bit of the white. Just give it a little bit of a background because the graphite gets all around, you just can't help it. Well, I think that's, that'll do us. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Well, thanks for watching through to the end. I really appreciate that and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Learning to draw doesn't have to be hard. You just take your time, break things down to the smallest part and everything else will fall into place. That's why I like to use the grid. The grid method to me is the easiest way, for me anyway, to be able to do a, a realistic type drawing. Now today's shout out goes to a lovely lady and her name is Annie Tro. Now I think I may have already given a shout out before but it's well worth giving her another one. She loves to spread the joy of art one brush stroke at a time. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now she does product reviews she gives you art lessons, free art lessons. She even goes live. So you can watch while she's painting one stroke at a time. <laughs> she has a playlist there which is all about asking the artist questions. So you can ask her how she goes about doing her artworks. She has giveaways and traceables. And she even has a vlog. So I know you're really going to enjoy her channel. So jump over there now. I'll leave a link in the description below. I know she'll really appreciate it. Now if you like what you see and you feel you get some value, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below as well. I reply to all your comments. Share it with a friend. They'll love you for it. <laughs> and remember, a family that draws together stays together. <laughs> well that's about it for this week. 
and we'll see you in the next one same time same place